You know, the sad thing about this show, it's the last one. Proline will be back in the fall, but it's that same old story. Just when the best was coming up, we had to end it right there. But you're going to like the last show. We got the old timers with us. We're going to talk about three different things. So sit back. Proline will continue. The Basketball and USFL Edition. Handicapping college, the NBA, and the United States Football League. Here's Lee Pete. Well, it doesn't seem like you know, 26 shows, or 16 for football, 10 for basketball. Not bad. You made all 26? Made them all. We had a three week. When I here. first flew into Austin, they were building an apartment. Now it's fully rented. <laughs> Roxy's here with us from Top Play. You're back. Sure, you become a ham overnight in television. <laughs> you're not Gary Austin. You're Gary Finch from Austin. The letters say Gary Lone Austin. Star. By the way, thank you. The letter from Elk Grove and one from Portland. I enjoyed them. And Jim Feist is here from Jim Feist Sports. Good to be back, Lee. Small group, but strong, but strong. Uh, kind of a humble jumble show. I think you'll enjoy it, though. The NCAA is, NCAA is going on. we got U.S. football, and we're going to touch on some NBA games. Last trivia question. Which one of those suckers in the NBA took the most shots lifetime? And Jimmy had a great answer for me. He said if Maravich would have played two more years, he would have had it. <laughs> His arms both went numb. <laughs> think about it. You had to play a long time, you'll probably come up with it. I'll give you the answer a little later on. I've been thinking about it. I can't figure it out. If everybody got all those right this year, it's a free trip to Tijuana for the whole weekend. You can go skiing down there. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Why a show? What's the difference, huh? Jersey Philadelphia basketball. Philadelphia has been very soft lately. I've watched them. I look at the box scores. I don't know if they're tired. They've given up on Boston, I assume. And they're coasting, doing things, getting ready. What do you think? Well, this is a case of a good road team versus a number against a poor home team versus a number. New Jersey covers about 60% of their road games. <laughs> and um, the 76ers cover about. I can't, this is unbelievable. <laughs> This is, it's going to be a fun show, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'm you may not right. make your plane. Yeah, we might. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll start again here uh, without the cough syrup. Uh, Jersey covers about 60% of their road games, Lee. Philadelphia covers about 45% of their home games. And this has been a trend that's been going on for just more than this season. In fact, it's been going on for a couple of years. And the reason the number hasn't been fixed this way is because people still like to bet Philadelphia at home, even though that they don't get the money. Public eight, team. Right. And eight points is, is too many. I like New Jersey here. Fox? Well, Philadelphia's taken three out of four so far. This is the same net team now with Dawkins back. Um, got a few injuries. It beat Philadelphia in the playoffs last year. Uh, another key here, Philadelphia would be playing New York the night before. Now, the Knicks just beat them in an overtime game last week, so they'll be kind of playing a revenge game. Probably settled a low score with the Knicks and uh, might be a little bit down. So the Nets with the points look attractive to me here, especially with Philadelphia playing the Knicks the night before. Hmm. I think about what he said there for a second. It sounded awful good. Uh, Jimmy's here. Jim Feist has joined us. He'll be on an extended tour after the show. He's going to here and he's going there at the we're, tournaments. We're, this is a fun time of year for well, you. Well, actually, I have an interesting uh, time. Tomorrow I go up to Tulsa. Yeah. And I'm going to stay over in Tulsa and see the four regionals up there. And the next day I'm going to fly down to Houston and see the four regionals down there. And from nice. there, I don't know, but I'm going to have a first-hand look at eight games. Nice. And it helps. It That's helps good. to be there. Good time of year for you, too. Yeah, it is. Okay. Real good. Who do you like, uh, New Jersey, Philadelphia? Well, I'd take the points. But New Jersey is slumping. You know, they, they, they have Dawkins back, but for some reason, they have gone into a slump right now. Philly, they don't cover at home, though. And New Jersey is good on the road against the spread, so I'd have to take the points. We remind you, too, if you see some numbers up on these games, uh, We've kind of calibrated these because things are going to be on a little bit later. They're They've been real close, close though. Well, We've I'll tell you something. That's very true, and it's a good point. We've checked them, and there hasn't been a great deal That's of change. Right. And, now, the line's uh, been excellent. We've had to put it up a week in advance. Roxy's done a lot of good work on this. You may be back next year. <laughs> uh, Washington. A <laughs> it's a threat. Washington. <laughs> I maybe shouldn't have said that. Washington's <laughs> going to play Detroit. Trapuca's back. This guy's back. 
round field or round tree or somebody's back. <laughs> uh, I can't figure the Detroit Ball Club out, Roxy. Well, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're healthy now, and I'll be able to get this out if you don't go to the cough syrup when right. I'm talking. <laughs> uh, for Washington, this will be the third game in four nights, and it'll be their fourth game since Monday. Now, Detroit's healthy now. Trapuca's back, Roundfield's back. And when Detroit's healthy, they're one of the top echelon teams in the NBA. I think now that these guys are back and they're going to get accustomed to playing with each other again, that they'll really get on a roll. I expect them to be a terror right through the rest of the season and into the playoffs. And I think they'll be able to handle an injury-riddled bullet team here. Agree, disagree? I agree. You thought it out pretty well. Uh, Detroit's coming on. And I don't think they're going to run for Milwaukee, but they will have to handle the Washingtons at this point out. Uh, uh, Detroit's a side. Jimmy? Detroit's usually good in a spot like this. You know, they're playing in Cobo now since their roof fell in at the uh, Silverdome. Uh, <clears throat> they played good there last night. Trapuca is back, and he's red hot. By the way, the guy built both places in Minneapolis and in Detroit, too, you know. Is that right? Yeah, it's his last two jobs. So one's, one's if he does it in Florida, he's okay. The floor is going to fall in at this If he does it in Florida, it's okay, but it's not working up there in the snow belt. You believe that. That's really incredible. That's Las Vegas construction. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would favor Detroit in this spot. Uh, favor Detroit. Washington, well, you know, they have Jeff Malone. He's, he's really lighting it up. Uh, they got... Uh, is Rulin hurt or back? Yeah, he is, he is still hurt. It's, it's every, every day. It's day to day. He's going to play. He's not going to play. He's going to play. not going to play. But yet he never plays. So... He may be like uh, Chuck Robinson in New York. He, he'll never be back. Right. Well, well he's been sidelined for a long time. They're listing him as being out indefinitely right now. Plus, uh, uh, their backcourt um, guy, um, Johnson, he's been out for quite a while. This is not exactly an Agatha Christie mystery novel, the NBA. Or can Milwaukee bite a few people and end up in the final two? The Lakers are going to be very tough. Milwaukee's got great balance. You know, they get six, seven, eight yeah. guys scoring in the uh, double figures. They could give uh, Philadelphia and Boston some trouble. Okay. I just wondered because uh, I just hope it's not going to wait for the Lakers to win out there and those two teams fight it out and boom, they come well, together. Well, that's kind of what it looks like. If you were a betting man, I'll tell you what <laughs> you'd it is. have to say all that's three, what's going to happen. All three teams have ordered ring sizes. That's right. So it's a little disheartening. Okay. We're going to come back and look at another one. We're going to come back and look at Houston and Boston when we come back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Jim Feist. You know, my USFL selections the first three weeks have been red hot. As a matter of fact, they're winning at almost a 70% clip. That's right, 70%. And I'll prove to you just how strong my plays are if you call me right now at 1-800-634-6995. That's right, the Arizona-Tampa Bay game on national TV is yours absolutely free. Call right now at one 800 634 6995. The official Nevada sports schedule brings you the St. Louis score phone. It's fresh, it's fast, and it's all the scores free. There's a single number to call in St. Louis, 314-781-1005. All the sports scores are yours, and they are updated every time the score changes. You get all the Las Vegas moves first, game conditions, injuries, and in the official Nevada rotation. And there are complimentary selections from the nation's top handicappers. Write down 314-781-1005. You'll be calling it every day. And remember, it's all free. Lone Star Sports, born for the USA. At Lone Star, we don't just claim to be number one. We prove it. 1982-83 and 83-84 NBA seasons, Lone Star had over twice the net winners of any other McCusker documented service. This season through the All-Star break, Lone Star has more net winners than any other McCusker documented service. 1984 USFL, Lone Star, the McCusker champion, won more money for our clients than any other McCusker documented service. Lone Star, not just good, but the best. Serious players, listen up. First-time callers can have this weekend's NBA selections absolutely free, and I'll follow that up with a guaranteed win week, plus a copy of our NBA computer printout. It's part of a $100,000 custom program. It's over 50 pages. What else would you expect from the best? Call now to start your free weekend, 1-800-531-5486 or 1-512-258-1672.
you probably caught on by now, we're a little loose in the show. Uh, Jimmy wants to do a commercial. Yeah, we got to do a commercial for this. Lee just bought a lot of stock in the Vicks company, apparently. And this is why Roxy was laughing before, because Roxy, when he was talking and analyzing the game, Lee was taking a drink of this. And <laughs> we, had to, we had to explain that. Six weeks, I've been sick with a cold, and they're making fun of me. Plus, it's 12%. <laughs> you get wacko on he two jugs of that, I'll tell you something. <laughs> all right. Two big guys, the Towers, I hear all this stuff. They're going to play Boston. And I watched them play, and if Lucas is there, they're not bad. And I just read a real, real bad article on Finch and uh, letting him come back. I mean, in the Sports Illustrator this week, this writer really lambasted him. He really took Finch to camp over bringing the guy back after going against his word. I don't know what's right and what's wrong anymore with the drug problem. What do you think? Well, I don't know if taking Lucas back was the right thing, but you've got to remember, here's the coach, he's under pressure to win, and he has to do what he thinks is the best for him to do this season. Maybe taking Lucas back was the right thing. But the towers are really important in this game because muscle, uh, muscle is Boston's game. Their front line, they beat a lot of teams just by shoving them around, and this is something they're not going to be able to do. Now, Houston is going to be on the road here for three games in four days. Uh, we mentioned travel a lot and fatigue because in no other sport, does travel and uh, factor mean more to handicapping than it does in the NBA. However, in this game, I think there's some uh, serious statistical advantages that will overcome the travel factor and give Houston a pretty good edge. One is that I'm always looking to go against the Celtics in Boston Garden because they're very weak at home against the spread. They're just 13 and 18. And the, the big reason is Houston on the road is some team. Right now, they're covering at about a 65% clip on the road. I really like Houston in this spot. In fact, well, I give him a good chance to win the game. If figures don't lie, it looks good. Fox? Well, I don't know about the, the moral, legal, or social problems with Lucas, but I think he is helping the Rockets. But remember where Bill Fitch used to coach? And he's got some talent now. And I think he'll be pointing to Boston. They've won about eight of the last ten on the road outright. I look uh, Houston to come in with a big effort, a, a playoff-type intensity uh, type of game. Those are generally low-scoring. I like Houston plus the points in a low-scoring game here. You know, Fitch is the only coach to win the uh, Coach of the Year award twice. That's right. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Wasn't he at Cleveland at one time? Sure. He stumbled around Cleveland and won any games. And uh, how long at Boston? Cleveland, Cleveland's got another pretty good coach right now. Oh, too. I like uh, him. We'll talk about him Charles before Carl. it's over. Jimmy, by the way, hand me my Vicks. <clears throat> how are you, Lee? I think I, <laughs> I feel a cough coming on. Okay, what well, do you think? Uh, we've analyzed three games so far, and I think we all like the same sides. I like Houston in this spot also. They're great on the road against the spread. Boston is weak at home. Everything's been said about this. The problem with Houston, though, uh, where Boston doesn't have this problem, Houston is weak on the bench. They, you can bring players off the bench, and they're not that strong. And Boston can bring players off the bench, and they are strong. Uh, Boston should win the game, but I think uh, seven uh, is a take. Is ML Carr still coming off the bench and hitting people? Sometimes yeah, with well, an umbrella, sometimes with... Uh, strange, he, isn't he? He's been he does strange things on the side. He he's a great cheerleader. But I'll tell you something about him. He comes in, he takes a three-point shot, and it always goes in. Right, but he's Incredible. been missing the last six, Has seven he? games, yeah. yeah. Well, it's an example of their bench, though. He could probably right. start for a lot of ball clubs. They, or, have, a, or, they have a real good bench. Uh, now, of course, they, they lost something with uh, Maxwell out. You know, he's a good ball player. In, and, the, uh, in the next game, Jordan has leveled off just a little bit. The team is not playing well. I've seen the Bulls twice in the tube. They've not looked all that good. Jordan's going between 26 and 35 every game. And they're going to have their hands full. Milwaukee is coming in. Well, they are. Milwaukee's been playing well of late, well, all season. And they've been exceptional against the point spread, not only at home or on the road. But if you haven't been playing them now, it's a little too late. The plane's got out, gone off and it's left you. Because a lot of times when teams overachieve and they play well, Odds makers don't have to make an adjustment because nobody's betting on the hot teams. Now here's a case where people are just betting Milwaukee all the time. And with this line, you can see the over adjustment that's been made. Three and a half at Chicago, that's way too many. You get some real value here taking the Bulls. You know, it's a lot easier just to pick the outright winner <clears throat> than the point spread winner. And Milwaukee, you know, let's just do that. The last 40 plus games, there's only been two games where the points were involved. Point spread, yeah, with points were involved with Milwaukee. Otherwise, just pick, figure whether they're going to win or lose. It's hard to believe, isn't it? And uh, they have that killer instinct. When they when they don't play well, they, they lose, and when they do, they cover. Uh, Chicago's already won a couple this year. I'll, I'll take Milwaukee here. I think Milwaukee will win four of them out of the six. Maybe coach of the year, Mr. Nelson. Jimmy? Well, I, I go with the road team. You know, Milwaukee is uh, is playing the best basketball in the league 
right next to Cleveland. Cleveland and Milwaukee are playing the two best teams right now in the league uh, with regards to consistency and momentum. Boston, of course, uh, Philly, and the Lakers continue to win, but not with the same intensity that the, this, these two teams are. So you have to stick with Milwaukee. I'll go along with what Roxy says. You just keep betting them until you start losing. Another team that's made a few trades and looks a lot better, Denver's at San Antonio, and Denver really playing some good basketball. Yes, they are. Uh, they let a guy go that's got 28 points a game, something like that, and brought in three fellas. They got, I think, fat levers in the backcourt. Yeah. They got Nat up front. And what's helped them is South Portland. It's just been a case of... Well, when you completely. look at that trade in retrospect, I mean, Denver oh. really got... To, <laughs> right now, Denver got the best of that trade. I don't know if Ramsey was in on the trade or not, but it's got to hinder your, your progress in the game if this keeps up. Yeah. Roxy, what do you think about it? Well, the, one of the reasons they claimed they made the trade, too, was to get under the salary cap so they could sign Paxson. One of the key players we didn't mention in the uh, trade was Wayne Cooper, who's really given Denver something they've needed, a center that can run up and down the court with that running game free uh, an aging Issel to go play on the wing where he should have been playing all along. And sparingly, so he's right. fresh. So I, Cooper's really made a big difference to this team. However, this is a new look Spurs outfit. Even before Gervin was hurt, he was getting less and less time, Robertson getting more and more. The reason they're trying to, Spurs are trying to shore up their defense. And when it comes to a home court series, this is the ultimate home court series. The last 27 times that these two teams have played, the home team is covered in 24 of them. 24 out of 27. They've covered, the home team's covered all four times they've matched up this year. Is that 90, uh, it's up in the 90s, isn't high, it? high, high percentage. That's terrific. And, uh, you know, I, I can't go against a trend like that. San Antonio minus two is pretty cheap. You didn't get that off the top of your head, did you? I mean, What's that? That was pre-rehearsed. No. You knew that stat. I knew that stat. You're scary. I knew that stat an hour ago. Did you really? Right. Okay. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Gary? I've got one, too. The, uh, <laughs> they've got Gerbing coming off the bench now. Robertson and Moore starting. A little bit more defense, a little more quickness, which would match up well with Denver. Gervin's adapted to the, to the row well. And uh, I think it'll, it'll hurt the Spurs uh, overall. Again, the last nine times they played in San Antonio, that goes back three years, including the playoffs, San Antonio's won all nine. <clears throat> the least they won, they had one game they won by three. The rest they won by you know, six, seven, or more. So if you bring us a number less than three, which we're saying they will, uh, San Antonio's aside here. With that new San Antonio lineup, a little more defense, generally bring you a number around 245, 248. I look for a lower scoring game than that number. Hmm. Again, funny? I'm going to agree. I'm, I'm, I'm following the leaders here, but uh, they, they've said it all. The, the, the history, you can't buck history like that. When you have history like that, no matter what's going on today, you just go with it. You go with the history because for some reason it works. Some teams don't play well in certain spots, in all sports, baseball, football, mm -hmm. basketball, whatever it is. There's some jinxes out there that are unexplainable. They go on for a number of years, some and then teams they stop. In, some teams in baseball do not hit well in other parks. Oh, absolutely. And that goes back 25 years. The, 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 the real mystery about that is all the players change. But somebody tells them about it. They, when they tell them about the it, and then they psych them out about right. it. And, and they say, Denver can't win in San Antonio. Oh, come on, Denver can't win. But they go down there and they don't win in San Antonio. It was somehow it works. Another San Antonio team, but we're going to go to USFL. Playing the LA Express, and the Express are really in trouble, guys. Uh, I think Young is their leading rusher, the quarterback. Uh, what the, are they 0-2? Uh, They're 0-3 oh, right oh, now. 0-3. I was kind to them. Yeah. I think the time has come. They better win a ball They had game. a game one last week, and it, well, Doug yes. Flutie took over yes, with his feet, not right. his arm. You're absolutely right. It's going to be an interesting. I think it's time now. San Antonio is going to get, it looks like it's going to be between 12 or 13 or 14 at game time, something like that. That's a lot of points. Uh, San Antonio, I watched uh, that quarterback for San Antonio, didn't look all that bad last week. He threw the, Doug finally threw the ball well, Doug Williams. Tough. Yeah, he was on the money, he moved well, and... Uh, could be interesting. You're talking about Arizona's quarterback, Doug no. Williams? No, yeah, I'm talking about uh, the little kid from uh, uh, California, Newhouse. Yeah. Newhouse. He's had a he's terrible, I was thinking of Doug now, Williams. Now, Newhouse, as you know, is, is coming back to the West Coast. You know, he went to UCLA. two or three times, and it's really hurt him. Well, he got replaced also by Mortensen last week. Um, I'm going to have to pass this game, Lee, because top play is giving away this game free this week. He won't give the tip out now right. or anything like that. Fox. Don't mind if I give the winner out now. Go ahead. You give the winner out. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
you know, score was very deceiving with that 31 to 18 score with uh, Tampa Bay last week. San Antonio was in that game, and New Hampshire threw an interception, or they could have won the game outright. And I don't know that they have as good a team as Tampa 